It's not like a hungry dog that's got to feed every, every three hours or four hours. It's not like that. Um, and it's, it's really not... It's almost not a new. Guys, viewer discretion is advised for this video. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about Australia's largest piece of garbage that has ever walked this earth. In reporting on this story, I feel deeply ashamed that the worst person to ever walk this planet is Australian. G'day everybody and welcome back to the Gulag. My name is Ryan and today's story we're going to be talking about the true crime of Peter Scully. Australia and possibly the world's worst pedophile. Now as I said in the beginning I did give you guys a warning some of the topics in this video will be quite triggering so much so it's actually making me mad. So if I get angry in this video keep your eye out because I'll be taking it out on Jimmy here every time I think of Peter's face. So without further ado, let's get stuck into the story. Peter Scully, born and raised in Melbourne, Victoria on the 13th of January, 1963, making him today old as sh Now Peter Scully, his early 30s, got into land development and property investing, which made him quite wealthy. Peter Scully carried a very smug attitude, which can be seen later on in the video on the interview with 60 Minutes. But the general consensus from his friends and own family is he was quite unbearable to be around. So Scully found himself flying to the Philippines quite often for lavish holidays. Now, whilst he was over there, he met his now that he flew to Australia and had two kids too. Now, for the privacy of this video, the wife and his two kids will remain nameless and out of it. But Peter Scully seemed to be living quite a normal and good life here in Australia. But that was until 2011, when the Federal Australian Police were on his back about a property investment scheme that rorted more than 20 people out of $2.6 million. So things in old Scully land weren't too great. So with this, being the coward that he is, Sorry. He fled to the Philippines. Now, I don't know if you guys know much about the conversion rate, but if you are wealthy in Australia and you migrate to the Philippines because of your legal wife that you have now, you pretty much become an instant millionaire. You can live like a king when you convert your Australian dollar to the Filipino money. So with that, he brought a beautiful property with a massive house on it on the island of Mindanao. And this is where the story takes a very dark turn. So from there, he ran a child trafficking ring. Now, Peter Scully was quite technically advanced with computers and the internet. So he also built a website that he would charge people pay per view for child explicit content. But it gets much darker than that. You see, he had his wife lure children in in the promise that they would get a fee. Now being in a third world country, there's not much food going around and it was quite easy for him to lure victims in. And once they were inside his house, this is what one of the children that escaped has to say. Check it out. Them ...with 52-year-old Peter Scully. Then after that, the kids have, um, what they call? Ropes? Yeah, ro not ropes for the dogs. Like Collar? Yeah, collar. They have, they have that. So when you return, two days after yeah. picking these girls up off the street... Yes. ...they are wearing dog collars. Yes. And they tell you that... Peter has already hurt them. Yeah. Rosie is the 12-year-old plucked from the streets with her 9-year-old cousin. After eating, Peter asked us to be naked and we were photographed and he took a video. Rosie tells me she was forced to perform sex acts on her cousin as Peter directed and filmed it. You look very sad as you tell me that. Is that how you feel? Yes, 
You heard correctly. He literally made them dig their own graves. And some of his victims were as young as 18 months old, which is absolutely vile. <laughs> Sorry, it's hard to get through this one. Now with the pay-per-view, he was charging $10,000 per video, which the Australian Federal Police found one of them, which was very viral across the globe. All over the world, there was a video called Daisy's Destruction. And this is how they pinpointed exactly where it was coming from. Now, there is something in this story that is not mentioned in the mainstream media. So over in the Philippines, they actually arrested him in 2015. They had an enormous amount of evidence on him. They had testimonies from children, the families. This guy was done for. Not only that, they had all the files on USBs of his dark website before he pulled it down. But strangely enough, in 2015, that part of the evidence room burnt to the ground. Does that sound suspicious? A wealthy man in a third world country prison able to bribe his way out? Well, that's exactly what happened. So he was on the run for four years after this incident. That was four years that victims could have possibly been saved if money wasn't the root of all evil. But in 2018, they finally gathered enough evidence and the righty was done and justice came through, where him and his wife were served 25 years prison. Now, later in 2022, more victims came forward, over 70 of them, and over 136 hours of explicit content, which they added an additional 126 years onto his sentence. So even when this guy passes away, he's gonna be in prison, still. Now, amongst those charges, guys, there was the unaliving of a child, but I have chosen for the respect of the family not to include that in today's story, as this story is bad enough. We really don't need to dive into that. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed today's story. Smash the like button, and until tomorrow, I'll see you guys again. I'm out. One more, one more for good. Take care.